Welcome to the Social Chameleon Show, where our goal is to help you learn, grow, and transform into the person you want to become. Today's episode, book review time, The Power of Intention by Dr. Wayne Dyer. This one, for the first time ever on this show, is Ransom Selection. Oh, God. Ransom <laughs> And, it, you know, of all the books you could have chosen, I never would have pegged this as a choice of yours. I, well, and, I I don't know, man. I just kind of, like I mentioned to you, I, I kind of just stumbled upon it. Like I didn't myself just pick this book up off the shelf. I was just like, I overheard somebody listening to it in an audio form. And like, I was kind of just, you know, I was just like one of those things. And I just kind of like listening. I'm like, you know what? This sounds like an actual freaking pretty good book. So, but as I was reading it, I was like, oh, I think this is like too spiritual. This is like, this is like too spiritual for Tyson. I was like, but you know what? He made me read that freaking four freaking tendencies book. I was like, I want to make you read something. And you know, I would say, I don't know, maybe two or three years ago, you would have had me read this book. I would have told you go fuck yourself. This is stupid. <laughs> but that's what I was thinking. That's what I thought you were gonna say. Now, yeah, yeah but, no, no. But I don't know what it was. I, mean, I want to say it was about two years ago. What, I don't know, whatever I was, I was doing, and I was like, you know what? I've, I've, I've spent so much time pushing this stuff off. Like, what is this about? Like, what is this spirituality kind of um, law of attraction, whatever these different types of things like that? Like, what is this about? And I started kind of, like, let's take, if I could take the religion part out of it, and I take the, the God and stuff out, and like, where, where, what is here? Like, how can I learn something from this? And, and so I kind of started, like, you know, there's some science here, like, I've seen um, they have this yeah. type of photography now where you can take a picture of your aura, that, that energy that's kind of off of you. So and then I started kind of going down that rabbit hole and it's like learning. So then it, this book, I really, really enjoyed. Like it's a lot more of that kind of stuff. And um, I was pleasantly surprised. Like, like I said, I'm glad it came into my life at the time it did versus a few years ago. I would have definitely been closed minded and dismissed it. But I really, really enjoyed it. Hey, that's that's good, man. Like, I, like I was thinking, like, like you said, two years ago, you've been like, ah, go, go, f you, man. I read this book, like, but I, I guess I grew up religious, maybe. Yeah, like, I was thinking I was kind of like forced on me as a kid. It was me too, but I spent a lot of time rejecting it. Yeah, but I guess as me growing up, um, I I kind of was just susceptible to it. Some mm -hmm. something inside of that took, you know. Uh, for me as a kid so like I, I'm not as religious as I used to be yeah um, and for those of you wondering this book is not necessarily about religion but it does have like a strong spiritual presence yeah um, that's talked about uh, um, you know maybe a little bit more than the secret but it's to me it's kind of similar on similar mm -hmm. lines of the secret um, that kind of stuff but yeah man hey, that's good dude at least you were open to it man I don't know know what that's about i guess maybe i don't know it's part of growing up or whatever but i've been definitely more open to like oh, where did you come up with that kind of thing or where did you hear that like what's there maybe if i could take something away from your point of view that i definitely would have been closed minded to many years ago and i've been I, it's been an enjoyment for me i've learned a lot of things and taking things into perspective um i never would have you know i get some great parking stalls now because you know <laughs> <laughs> okay I don't know. it's funny I, I think it started when i did watch that movie the secret and it's like i started like i'm gonna try and you know practice some of these at least if not if for anything but being being a better person more in tune to the things that's kind of going on around me yeah cool all right so you want to get into i guess the definition yeah um, let's yeah let's this, this, so this book is the power of intention so let's work from his definition of what he means by intention i'm gonna <clears throat> this is what he says so a, a strong purpose or aim accompanied by a determination to produce a desired result. People driven by intention are described as having a strong will that won't permit anything to interfere with achieving their inner desire. So that's the definition of, of intention we're going to work from with this book, which is what he's working from. Yeah. And I guess I can just add a little caveat onto that. I mean, just we're just giving that definition for say right off the bat as to what it is, but, um, Dr. Wayne Dyer does go into detail to kind of describe like a force of basically creation. So, you know, going into detail and just kind of like 
you know, I am in healthcare. I mean, we understand how humans are conceived, right? I mean, the, the lucky swimmer gets to the egg, right? And then bada boom, bada bing. Um, but I mean, in all actuality, nobody can really explain where life comes from mm-hmm. or in, in healthcare or when life goes away. You know, there is a spiritual component to that cluster of cells. It's not just like these cells mesh and, and start growing. Like there's, there's conception of consciousness, mm-hmm. right? There's an actual soul or spirit inside of that creature, whatever it may be. And it continues on until, until the end, you know, at the end, the soul leaves the body. So, you know, if you can kind of imagine someone, what may is like this power of intention comes from a force or invisible source that's all around us. Something that is being all creating. Um, it's, it's what created you right into existence, right? And it's going to continue to live through you in the in spiritual sense, I guess, if that's, you know, if, to me, that's the best way of describing it. Um, I'm sure Dr. Wayne Dyer does a lot better job at that, but that's just my uh, my take on it, per se. <clears throat> that's the thing, like, I mean, I uh, was it, I don't know, Einstein or Newton or whatever that said, energy cannot be created or destroyed. So it's interesting how the theory, I guess, goes that, you know, you just move from one thing to the next as your, you know, energy form into this body yeah. and out of this body and you move around through the universe. And I think- I think maybe that's knowing you. I think maybe that's probably why you are more susceptible to this book because it is about science too. Yeah. It's not just about oh, you know, this all all ever knowing being or whatever created us into existence. It's like we don't know what that is. You know, right. we do know about energy. Like you said, it can't be created. It can't be destroyed. Um, Dr. Wayne Dyer also talks about energy frequencies, right? Mm-hmm. Like he talks about negative things being at a low frequency of energy versus the positive things being at a higher frequency. Like though, though I can concur with, with some of the things that he's had. It's like, yeah, he's, he's, he has a good point. So it's interesting. Yeah. And that, and that's, that's the things that I liked about this. And a, a lot of these other things that um, go into, and they, they bring the science in and they bring in the math and the different things like that. And it's like, it, it makes it less about the, the crystals and the, you know, the things it makes it more real. Yeah. It makes it more real. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and then he's also got, I mean, the first part of um, the essentials of intentions is just identifying ego and that right. comes along with psychology. Like, you know what I mean? It's just, those are all, those are again, all science. So I think he does a really good job at how he presents everything. Yeah. So I mean, that's the thing that sits on my desk all the time. You know, ego is the enemy. You know, this coin just sits right <laughs> on my desk, constantly reminding me. Yeah, you know? that's from all these people. So I guess, I guess I'll start with the ego stuff. So basically, um, I guess he had a book or something that this kind of describes this into further detail, but he just touches upon it here. Mm-hmm. So basically, the six ingredients to ego are the first one is I am what I have. Yeah. Uh, my possessions define me. And then the second would be, I am what I do. My achievements define me. I am what others think of me, right? That's my reputation that defines me. Uh, Four would be, I am separate from everyone, right? My body defines me as being alone. Mm -hmm. And then five would be, I am separate from all things. I'm separate from all that is missing in my life. My life is disconnected from my desires. And then from there, the sixth one would be, I am separate from God, right? My life depends on God's assessment of my worthiness. And those are just kind of the basics of, of the ego. The ego. <clears throat> That's, I mean, yeah, I, I like that he kind of starts the book off with these, these things like, listen, identify your ego and the things that you think are driving you. These are all coming from the ego. When you silence that and you're aware of that, like from then you can move on to the next phase in your evolution right i mean because i mean we'll get to this in the end but these are all things of you know the physical portion of your body right or you know the the worldly possessions that you have right like you know you got the lambo you got the mansion like that stuff's not gonna go with you right you know 
wherever you're going to go after this. But those are the things you're chasing in life. And then you're making the decisions based on if I do X, like that will get me the Lambo. That will get me the Gucci purse. That will get me these things. Right. And sometimes those things are not even based on what you believe. Sometimes right. those are based on what everybody else is saying. It's like, well, you want to make money. You got to be a lawyer. You got to be a doctor. It's like, is that really true? Yeah. Or you want to be respected. You got to do these things. Like, or if you don't have enough plaques on the wall, you're not really achieving anything. Yeah. And that's, you know, again, that comes from the physical realm, right? right. That comes from everyone here on earth attaining what we can because we are you know, creatures that live in the physical manifestation, we have to take that into account. Like, you know, we do need a house per se, right? It doesn't need to be a mansion. Right. We do have things that we collect. Right. But there's also this spiritual component that, you know, I think people are aware of, but they're not necessarily, you know, I guess more in tune with that. And that's kind of what, Dr. Wayne Dyer talks about the more you are about your ego and about your physical possessions and all these things that you have and being separate, the less in tune you are with your spiritual side, yeah. right? The less in tune you are with this power that brought you into existence. And, you know, if you can focus on that and be in tune with that power that brought you into existence, mm -hmm. that will kind of lead you towards your intention per se. Yeah. And, you know, when I first started learning about this stuff, like, <clears throat> that was kind of chasing those worldly possessions. That was like the one thing that stood out to me the most because I had spent all of my life up to that point. Like I'm, I'm going to achieve this financial goal. I'm going to achieve this house status on the corner of the block. Like I'm going to get the lamb. Like I, I spent like all my energy and all the decisions I made were in pursuit of Ferraris and mansions and these things. And then when I started like kind of learning about this and I'm like, like shit, I was like, maybe, maybe this doesn't serve me. Maybe chasing these mansions and Ferraris is why I'm making poor decisions and I'm getting involved in businesses and different things and with people that I don't want to because I know like, oh, if I get, if I hook up with, you know, with Tim and I do this thing, like that's going to get me closer to this thing, but I really don't want to be doing that. And I started shifting away from that. I, was like, yeah. I, I felt so much more free to like, express myself and to do things that that truly um gave me pleasure and, and 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 was able for me to help other people and do other things it was that was the most profound thing that i i found in in all of these types of things yeah but i, I don't think you're alone and they're not saying everybody chases ferraris but you know a lot of people go after jobs because of the amount of money that they make you know mm -hmm. A good example would be healthcare. Like a lot of people are in healthcare because it pays a lot. You right. Know? I know a few people in healthcare that they just, they really don't enjoy the job. Like you can yeah. see it on their face. They show up to work every day, uh, you know, but the money's good enough to keep them there. Right. You know, they're not necessarily happy. I think they'd be happy in another job, but mm -hmm. who am I to say? I don't, I don't, you know, I don't know what that's about, but. You know, that just comes back to all the ego, right? The possessions that you have and all this other stuff. And, you know, that's not the only important thing in life. Well, at least from what I think. I agree. I agree. definitely agree with that. <clears throat> and so once you have a, a good level of comfort, everything else after that is just excess. Yeah, it kind of comes bonus. But anyway, getting back to, I guess, the, the steps of intention too. Mm. So, you know, the first part of it is getting back to the ego, like we were talking about. And then the next would be like the four steps of intention. So the first one would be, and, and again, he just talks briefly about it in this book because he does have other books on the subject that he does reference. Mm -hmm. So um, the first one is discipline. You know, learning a new task requires training your body to perform as your thoughts desire. You know, and this is kind of going from if you're going to shift right from the ego mm -hmm. and shift to towards your intention in life like that's going to require discipline like you're going to have to learn new things you're going to have to create new habits yeah you're going to have to think differently and along the same lines of that um, the second step would be wisdom right wisdom combined with discipline right fosters your ability to focus be patient as you harmonize your thoughts your intellect and your feelings right with your body being at work and then the third step would be love 
on this one. So again, it's kind of a part where Tyson may be drifting off. Oh, let's go love people. But uh, <laughs> I'm I'm a lot better at that now than I used to be. Yeah. But that's good. I had to make these conscious right. um, decisions and make these conscious acts. It's like, why am I avoiding these things? Why do I despise them? What's there? And I've had to look in within myself to say, what is this? And I think for me personally, you know, when, when um, I had my son, I think that was the moment where I was like, I started to kind of break out of that and, and realize that there's something, you know, greater. And that if I have to be able to give, you know, him that love so that he can grow up to be a person much better than I, I and not have that limiting, you know, belief or living, limiting things around habits, around love and, and affection and all these things that I, yeah. I avoided a lot of. Oh, hey man, that's, that's good, dude. I'm, yeah. I'm happy for you on that, you know, but I mean, for, I guess, as Wayne describes it in his thing, like love after disciplining the body with wisdom mm -hmm. and intellectually studying a task, this process of mastery involves loving what you do, right. And doing what you love. Yeah. So, you know, love, not necessarily in the sense of like all hippie stuff, but mm -hmm. love coming like from within here, like you have to feel it within your heart, right? Not necessarily your heart that pumps blood around your body, but yeah. you know, within your soul. Like, cause if you're not one with the things that you're doing and the things that you're doing are not one within inside of you, you're going to feel that turbulence, right? Right. You're going to feel the tear and that's taking you again away from your intention in life. And that's when you, you know, you go to work and, and you hate being there and you hate everything. And that <laughs> plays off into everything you're doing, the servicing of your customers, your clients and whatever it is. And just, you know, answering the phone, Ugh, ABC, what do you want? Like, I hate being here. Why am I doing this? Versus if you can, maybe initially, especially, you know, if you can just like, go, oh, you know what? If I can love being here, even though I used to hate being here, I can, I can change at least this situation now until I can start to drift into something else I truly want to be in. You're, you're, I, I guarantee you're going to affect not only yourself and in, in your job, but the people around you, your coworkers, your customers and whatever, with such this new level of, of you know, compassion and, and respect and who knows, you might even, you know, you might even fall in love with this, this thing you've been hating for all these years. You find that you're good at it. And it's something that, you know, between your, your knowledge and your life experiences, you can help a lot of people doing. Yeah, possibly. And that, that comes to takes us to the fourth step that he talks about, which is surrender. Right. And like, this is your place of intention. This is where your body and your mind aren't running the show and you move into your intention, right? Your purpose. And that's just kind of like all these things that you've been doing in the past, right? This is your ego talking, right? These are your friends talking. This is your family telling you what you should do. Like, you know, after you get a grasp on things and you just learn to kind of surrender, like, you know, you can be in tune with your attention and start moving towards it. And, you know, you know what I, I've, I've experienced from that, that place of, of surrender is what happens is, um, when your mind is opened up and you start to, to do, start doing these things, you start to um, have these thoughts. What happens is you start to see these opportunities that a lot of times were always in front of you and you never, yeah. you never, you never grabbed at them. You never picked them up. You're like, look at, look at this. Well, right. You're, well, look you're at still this. focused on all the other things in right. life. You know, your monotonous tasks of the right. day. Like, I got this big to-do list that I just yeah. start crossing things off that you're not focused with what, you know, what you truly want or what's truly intended for you. And it's yeah. kind of crazy. Like what's that? Um, was it a story or joke or whatever with a guy's in a burning building and then he's on the kind of hanging out in the building and then the fire department comes and they put that like trampoline thing out and they're like, jump. He's like, no, 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 God, God will take care of me. And then <laughs> yeah. they start put, trying to put the fire out and then like the helicopter comes and he's like, oh, come on, you got to get out the building's going to cram. He's like, no, no, God will take care of me. And then he dies. He goes to God. He's like, oh, fuck you. What the hell, man? He's like, what are you talking about? Bro, I, I got you the fire department. I got you the helicopter. Like, what didn't, what didn't you do? He's like, what did you expect me to do? Come down there and grab you by the hand and take you down the stairs? Like, <laughs> no, but that, you know, it's kind of what happens, right? We, we get so clouded with these things that we don't see these opportunities that are right in front of us. And it's this, this thing that can take you down a path that, you know, sometimes you never even would have ever thought of. Like, you can have this awesome five-year plan 
but you, if you're so hyper focused on these ego driven things, you're not going to see these little things like that. that if I you know, start going down this thing and I'll, you'll get this place you never could have ever imagined. Yeah. And I think even when he was writing the book, he was like, Dr. Wayne Dyer was like looking for examples, right? And his daughter mm -hmm. called him. He's like, oh yeah. Like, you'll never believe. He's like, you'll never believe. She's like, I kind of thought about what you said. And then mm -hmm. like, as I was walking down, I saw this phone number that said, you know, horse stable rides. He's like, I wrote the number down. When I got home, I called it. And mm -hmm. sure enough, the lady was looking for people to like do trail rides. And she hired me on the spot and yeah. I make exactly double what I make at the restaurant. Like, yeah. I was like, damn, I was like, that's crazy. Yeah, that, that's the things that happen. You start like when you, it's like clearing your mind in a way and you just start to see these, these opportunities, like these once in a lifetime deals that come around every day. Yeah. And that's, that's just it, right? Like if you believe that they come around once in a lifetime, right? Mm -hmm. Like that may be your ego talking, right? That may be your friends talking. That may be something outside of you, but. Mm -hmm. If you can quiet those down, you may see that that once in a lifetime deal, it actually comes around a little bit more often than that. A lot more often than you think it does. Yeah. They're, they're, they're always, they're always out there. Always, always, always. Yeah. And then that's kind of, I guess the next part, I guess the seven faces of intention, since you're, since you're open to this now, I'd like to hear you um, talk about these. Tyson, please. Just, the, so he, he goes into the, but you know, uh, you yeah. So, I'm sorry. Um, so his seven faces of intention are the face of creativity, kindness, love, beauty, expansion, unlimited abundance, and reciprocity. That, no receptivity, but yeah. sorry, receptivity. Hello, reciprocity. It's uh, it's it's up there. You want to avoid that, but it's good. <laughs> but. It's, it's funny, do you, when you start to kind of like uh, un unlock all these things, like becoming more creative, like, and it's not, and a lot of times when we think of creativity, especially myself, I think of like, you know, painting or graphic design or something like that, but getting creative in, in like structuring a business deal or, or, or finding, finding money or financing or solving a problem or, you know, you know, these, you like to see these guys like, um, I think especially if you grew up like um, without like money or, or without the ability like to go purchase new parts all the time, you start to get creative, like a couple of zip ties here, a little duct tape. And it's like, next thing you know, you have this thing and like, that's like creative. MacGyver. It's like MacGyver. Right. Right. But that's creativity. And then, and then kindness that just, that opens up like this whole nother, this whole nother world. Like you start to, to, you know, and, I think a lot of the problems we have in, you know, in America could be solved by taking care of your neighbor, showing kindness, letting the person go, you know, stop getting pissed off when somebody cuts in front of you and it steals your parking spot or whatever, like these dumb things we get so upset about. We yeah, spend so I much think energy. I'm not sure if he talks about it here, but Dr. Wayne Dyer does talk about that. Like, stop being offended. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if yeah. you're being offended, then that's, that's your own mind. Like, playing tricks on you like and that's that's your ego talking he's like you're the person that's getting offended right the other person is just doing what they're doing right and for me i even remember in a psychology class once that i took like people are, are they're not aware of like conditions mm -hmm. right like a person who cuts you off like you know you're, you're driving along and this person just comes and like they cut you off and like you know what I mean? They shortchange everybody. It's like mm -hmm. most people look at that person like, oh, that person's an a-hole. Right. You know, that person's just a jerk. And right. it's like, but you don't necessarily know the conditions behind that person. You know what I mean? How do you know that that person just doesn't have to go take a dump and like he needs to cut you off because he got to go to the bathroom. Or his wife's in a pastor. She, she's giving birth. Yeah. It's like you have no idea what the conditions are behind that person and what they're doing. Right. You know what I mean? Like you just see the action. You right. don't necessarily see all the things that are behind it. So getting offended in that situation, like you're just putting the worst situation possible together. Right. Like that person could actually do something. Or who knows if that person didn't cut you off, like you may have gotten into a traffic accident. Like, I mean, yeah. you, you got to think about these things, like on a, you know, this creativity, kindness and love, like on a positive note, not necessarily coming from things that are either ego driven or, 
negative or like he talks about right lower energy level activities i don't know, I know. <clears throat> when uh when somebody tells me all that you, that's a fa- you offended me i'm like i just you're welcome now why <laughs> No, no. Why? Why are you offended? What is what is it within you that this bothers you so much? Yeah. And most people are like, "How dare you? <laughs> you should go home and you should think about this." Yeah. Like, there's something here, and there's nothing to do with me. Exactly. It's like I'm just saying what I'm saying. Like, yeah, you're right. not taking offense to this. Right. You you interpret it however, whatever it was. Why? Go explore that. Go explore that. Be aware. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. but I think my favorite one of these is is this unlimited abundance. Yeah, like, that's cool. Like I wanna maybe like a year ago or so, like this guy came out with some movie about it. And I was like, I was, I saw, I was watching the movie and I was like, man, you're you're missing the boat here, buddy. Like you've got this like all wrong. Like he I wish I could remember what the movie was about, but he came about it from like, from like creating wealth and all this stuff. And I was like, abundance is, it's like so much beyond that. You know, you know, like even in the book, he, when Doc talks about um, the air we breathe, like it's, it's here for you forever. There's, there's more than you could ever use. You know, it doesn't stop here in the kitchen and start, you know, in your, in your bedroom. It's, it's everywhere around you. And, and I think every, the other things in life are like that too, you know, um, financially, there's all the money in the world is you, you can go get your share of it. If you are doing the things that are in line with the things that allow that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, I definitely like that part where he talks about air. It's like when you talk about things that are overly abundant, like, or, you know, they, then like if you take it a numerical value, right? Like zero is zero, but infinity is infinity. It's infinite. Like, it goes on forever. It doesn't ever stop. As we was talking about air, it's like you can't separate it. It's not like when you walk from room A to room B mm-hmm. that the air is not going to be there. The air is still there. Even right. when you walk outside of your house, it's like the air is still there. When you go to work, like it goes on for infinity. Right. Like it's always there. It's ever, you know, and like I think that's kind of true about unlimited abundance. And like if people can put themselves in that place where things in their life are limitlessly like there is no limit to the abundance that they have like that kind of helps them be humble that kind of helps them be grateful you know what i mean as far as yeah, you're not like you're not selfish anymore it's like there's plenty there's so much more like you want food have it there's there's more this came from this it's it's ever plentiful money it's ever plentiful. it's it's always there and everything in your life there's always more. There's, there's, everything is, is infinite. Yeah. And I mean, and don't get me wrong. I, I know that, you know, there may be some of you out there watching this where like, you guys don't have two nickels to rub together for whatever reason, you know, however, you also have to take into consideration that, you know, if that's just your mindset, like, do yeah. you really only have two nickels to rub together? You know what I mean, like, or, you know, but when you come from a place of abundance, you're not just thinking about the two nickels that you have in your hand, right? You look at all these things, right? You start to be creative so that what you have, you you make the best use of it or, you know, you be kindness, right? It's like, it's like okay, if we're, if we're kind, if we're loving or we're beautiful, like, you know what I mean? Those are all things that are things that we have. Right. You know what I mean? These are all part of the abundance within you. And you can work on expanding that. And I think, you know, these seven faces of intention are just all of that. Like these are, if you think of energy, right, in its lowest form, right, where it's not moving, it's just moving real slow versus energy that's moving really fast and really rapidly. Like your thoughts, just your thoughts about all of these things. When you think about love, what happens in your brain? You know what I mean? Like lights up. Start firing off. When you think about kindness, like, things start firing off when think about things that are beautiful like start firing off i mean he even talks about you know looking at everyday life it's like look at the flowers like take a look what's the difference between the flowers that are dead right and the flowers that are alive you know it's like all of these kinds of things like if you're grateful 
And I don't know, to me, it just, it goes on into infinity. There's so many things that you can do when you come from a place of abundance versus coming from a place of scarcity. It's crazy. Yeah. And the, the one thing I like, I, I learned about, <clears throat> about that was that these things have to flow to and through you so that they can keep going. So if you, if you want to, to, to have that, like say money flow through you, you have to receive the money and you have to let it go so it can flow in. If you stop the flow, if you plug up the flow, if it comes in and you plug it up, it can't, it can never come back again. So you've got to keep that pathway open. You've got to keep these things flowing so that they can continuously replenish themselves. So you can continuously get the abundance. Like if you stop the river, like yeah, the river, the river can bring you water forever, but if you stop it, that's the end. Like you, you're stopping that. You've got to let that flow. You've got to let the money come in through. You've got to let these things, these possessions, all these things, you've got to let it come in, flow, flow from here to there. Yeah. And that's, I don't know. To me, that's just, that's just kind of like a good setup for things. Like, yeah. Think about things that are high level energy, like high energy sources, like right. positive things. You know, when you start to think about all of these things as positive, then that kind of gives you you know, the attitude and the framework over which to do things, mm -hmm. you know, that takes us to the next thing, which is like one of my favorite parts of this book is the match game. Yeah. Like, my, my favorite part too. I love that match game. It's so much fun. You know, and it's like, he talks about things that you think on a regular basis mm -hmm. and like, that's not matching with intention versus right. changing your mind frame about things so that you're matched towards intention and not away from it. Yeah. Don't you take off on some of these Tyson, yeah, no, so these, these I love, I love these because they take this and, and in your, in your life, if you can take these, this little match game and so play this match game with yourself, like, so here's some examples and then we can, we can kind of, I'll give you some, some, some ways to take this into your life. So here's a no match. I don't have enough money match. I intend to attract unlimited abundance in my life. No match. I've always been poor. I was raised on shortages and scarcity. That's not even you. That was somebody else that gave you those. Think about that for a second. But the match here is, I intend to attract wealth and prosperity in unlimited abundance. I hate this place I'm living in. No, this is a no match. It gives me the creeps. Match. I can see our new house in my mind. I intend to be living there within the next six months. No match. Good. I just like the work I'm doing and the fact that I'm not appreciated. Match. I'll act upon my inner in intuitive impulses to create the work or job of my dreams. Now start to think like when you're having these thoughts in your head, like think about this, like, is this a match? Like, you know, like, oh, this is bullshit. Like, oh, whoa, whoa. is that a match or a no match? What would be the match be? Swap it up in your head. Watch the things change in your life. Yeah, definitely, man. You know, even this other ones he's got here is like, my partner is grouchy and boring. And it's like, match. I intend to focus my thoughts on what I love about my partner. I mean, like, these are all things that are, you know, again, like, that's why I like the science behind it, right? This mm -hmm. stuff about my partner's grouchy and boring. That's like a low energy level thing, right? Versus I'm going to focus on my thoughts on what I love about my partner. It's, right. it's like, that's a high level energy thing. If you focus more about what you love on your partner, that's what you're going to, you're going to allude to. That's what you're going to focus on. Mm -hmm. That's what you're going to think about on a constant basis. Eventually what you think about on your constant basis becomes your beliefs. So exactly. if you start thinking that your partner's grouchy and boring. That's what you're saying to yourself over and over and over. Guess what? Your partner, your partner is grouchy and boring. Yeah. You know, and it's like, I, that's to me, this no match match stuff that that's crazy. Dude. This kind of turns the light on. It is, and that's where the, like, the science comes in here. They, you know, likes attract likes these frequencies. They go together. If you're, if you're on this AM band, you're going to receive the AM band. Like you're going to, you know, you turn into that tune that station. That's what you're going to get. You're you, what you think is what you get. Yeah. Do you sure. think in all these no match thoughts, you know, um, it was another one here I like. Uh, I can't help feeling this way. It's my nature. I've always been this way. That's your fucking belief? How about this then? Let's, let's, let's find the match for that. I'm in a divine creation, capable of thinking, thinking like my creator. I intend to substitute love and kindness for feelings of, of any kind of in, in adequacy. Adequacy. Woo! It's my choice. And that's what it comes It's your choice. Are you going to think no match statements? Or are you going to think match statements? Are you going to bring no match shit into your life? Are you going to bring match shit into your life? It's your choice. Right. And the same thing too, right? He goes for to talk about his family one, right? I'm sure you can resonate. Oh, this was, 
<laughs> yeah, I was like, I hear you, bud. <laughs> I'm so annoyed with my family. They just don't understand me and they never have, mm -hmm. right? That's the no match versus the match is I love my family. They don't see things my way and I don't expect them to. I'm totally focused on my own intentions and I send them love. Yeah. Like, and that's the thing I, I have, I've had trouble with, not in general. Like, listen, let me, let, me, let me explain this to you real quick. And you're going to see it my way and you're going to have this whole thing. And that never works. Yeah. I'm guilty of that many times. Yeah. Many, many times. And it's, it's, it works sometimes, but more often than not, especially on the times when I, I want it to work, it yeah. does not work and it blows right. up in my face. Because it goes I, back to, like we spoke about, if they're not ready to receive this, they're not ready for that, that change... It's just not, no matter what you do or say, it's not going to do any good. Yeah. You know, and it's just like, I, I resonate with a lot of this stuff because mm -hmm. it's, these, again, are the thoughts. And I like how Dr. Wayne um, relates your thoughts to either low levels or, or high frequency energy. Like, I think that that's, that's crazy. And then um, from there, he, I don't know if the math is right and, <laughs> In any of this, oh. but he can talk. He talks about how, when you have these high frequency energies, like you can, you can, what is it? Compensate, right? You can offset. Compensate. You can offset the lower level frequencies of of the rest of humanity. It's kind of crazy. Uh, yeah, I, so don't, I don't know all the math. Do you have the math on our notes? I have, I have the one here. Um, by raising your own frequency of vibrations only slightly to a place where you regularly practice kindness love reciprocity and where you see beauty and endless potential of good in others as well as yourself you counterbalance ninety thousand people somewhere on this planet who are living in the low energy levels of shame anger hatred guilt despair depression and on and on that's so that's you and i we just do some good shit. we can take care of 180 thousand people minimum <laughs> Like, even if that math doesn't even, even if that math's not real, I don't even care. Right. Like, just the thought of, like, I have the potential of, of, by me just doing a good deed, like, just what I should be doing as a human being to my fellow neighbors, you know, I can offset all this, this, this anguish in the world of 90,000 people. That's, that's unreal, un unbelievably amazing. Yeah. And I think he even has a story for this, too. Like, he... He was at a grocery store, right? And he had like yeah. this big old basket or something like that. And I mean, we've all kind of done this. I've done this at the grocery store. I mean, hopefully everybody's done it. But you have this huge cart and then like somebody behind you, like, yeah, have like two or three items. And right. like, Carton of eggs. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, it's like, bro, just go ahead of me, man. Like, it's all good. Like, you sure? Like, nah, don't even think about it, man. You got like two things. Just yeah. go there and you'll be done with it, you know? You'll be waiting yeah. for like 10 minutes behind me. Right. All this stuff. But um, when he did that, like, you know, the lady turned to him. She's like, you know, thank you. He's like, my husband and I were thinking about leaving this town because mm -hmm. nobody's nice here. Nobody's friendly. Nobody does anything. She's like, I hope you understand what you've done today. Like, you, you've changed my mind. At least there's one person in this town. Like, there, there's got to be others. And, right. like, I was like, that's crazy. Like, he affected a whole family, not just the person standing in line. Yeah. And I mean, like that family he changed that family's life just by doing that one thing he affected four people or however big that family was right but that's the things like i mean i've heard stories all the time where you know i was gonna i was gonna kill myself or i was gonna do this and and this guy was nice to me i was like you know what maybe there is something good here you don't even realize like what you can do for somebody by just being kind letting them go in line, whatever it is, like helping them up, giving them a hand, you know, these things go such a long way. And then you put these people in a better mood and then what do they do? They, they hold the door for the next person. Now, I, well, I don't do that shit, but you know what, I'm feeling good. This guy helped me out. I'm gonna hold the door yeah. now. And then what happens? Well, it's just this domino effect. It just keeps going and going and going. It's, yeah. It's all, and these are the things I think like when we, put on our god dang phones and stop filming the tragedy and start being common part of the sort of become part of the solution we can start to change these things yeah definitely and that's just kind of you know i don't know about this whole math of 90,000 people but mm -hmm. i mean i know for sure that 
you know, one act of kindness can go longer, you know, just like the, the story about the people at the Starbucks drive through, right? Like right. one person paid for the people behind them yeah. and like went on like the entire day. Right. Like that person, Oh, the guy I found paid. Oh, okay. I'm gonna get the next guy then. You know what I mean? Right. Like, here you go. I'm gonna get the next guy behind me. Like that's just like, and it got past. I went like the whole day like that. that right. Kind of crazy. Yeah. Those are the, I, yeah, those are great stories. I love those, those kinds of things. And then, so the next part of this book is putting intention to work. So it's the part two. This one's, this one gets a little, little deep and it's, it's good, but it, it talks a lot about self and self-respect. And what, what do I got here? So perhaps the greatest mistake we make, which causes a loss of self-respect is making the opinions of others more important than our own opinions of ourselves. Mm. I got a quote, one of these quotes over here from, uh, I think it's, uh, I don't know if it's Seneca or Marcus Aurelius. It says the same thing. We were so worried about the opinions of others and not the opinions of ourselves. It's like, can you, I mean, can you think, and Matt, the things we do all day long, the, the clothes we wear, the, all these different things, it's like, it's all about what the other people are going to think of us. Like if I, <sighs> I got to match these clothes because if I go out in the world, somebody might look at me and say, this guy don't match his clothes. Yeah. I, shit. Yeah, that's it's true. And then like, I mean, but some of us also take into a fact, like we try to dress to impress, you know what I mean? Right. Like we're going to go out, like we, you know, we are in competition with other males to get female attention and, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. But for females, I think it's even worse too, because like, not only are they trying to get a mate, but right. it's like their female counterparts actually do judge them, which is kind of right. strange. Yeah. And then mean? they gotta, they gotta put on the makeup and the plastic surgery and all this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, it's just because it's something among themselves, you know, and mm -hmm. it's, I mean, I think it's sad, but I mean, at the same time it is, it can work for you. Um, but yeah. in, in all honesty, I, you know, your opinion of yourself, I think is truly what matters the most. Right. right? You know, I mean, that's what should take precedence over what everybody else thinks. Yeah, sure. You're going to go dress up when you go out on occasion, but when you go home, like you still have yourself, you know, yeah. you got but that should, that should make, you should want to do that. So you feel good. So right. you, not, not because, Oh, well, if I put this dress on, then I should probably get a date and then maybe, <laughs> Like, no, like, I, I like, this is something I like. I'm going to put this on. I put this purple shirt on because I got a pink shirt. And people are like, oh, you, I don't give a fuck. I like it because it feels good for me. Good <laughs> you. Yeah, but I think, I think you made that comment earlier, right? I mean, like, not, not everybody feels that way, right? I mean, yeah. when you're taking this intention stuff to put to work, I mean, the first thing that Dr. Wayne Dyer has on here is like, you know, take a look into the mirror and make eye contact with yourself and and say i love me as many times as possible during the day like you know yeah. I, i'm not a big fan of people who tell you to do that but I, I mean, you made the comment to me earlier right like not everybody can do that no you know it's like especially if they're at those lower level energies you know what i mean mm -hmm. if they're in this place of shame or anger or hate or guilt or despair yeah like, it, you know I've heard of people and things like, you know, they can't even look themselves in the mirror when they're just brushing their teeth because they can't stand to look at themselves. They're so disgusted with themselves for whatever they had done or however they think that the world has treated them or whatever it is. So to look in the mirror and look at yourself, even if it's just to like, just whisper it to yourself, like, I love you. Like, do but, it again. Do it again. And then, and then, and I mean, I mean, tomorrow you can, Get a little bit more and a little louder. And next, maybe one day you can stand up and say, I love you. Mm, you're the man. Like, look at you, dude. Like, yeah. You know, but this is the things I actually, I've, I've done this forever. I look at, I'll be covering my hair and be like, hey, how you doing? Yeah. Yeah. You look, I know. I know. Yeah. Some are more narcissistic than others. I definitely agree. Um, but I mean, to me, again, I'm not always one to say that, but this is the time when you can practice. You know yeah. what I mean? It's just you in the mirror. And if you want to, you know, practice at least selling that or practice mm -hmm. at least being enthusiastic about it, 
Um, I'm a firm believer that you can love other people without loving yourself. Right. Don't get me wrong. That's, it's not the best way to do things, but if that's the only way that you know how to do it, start with that. Right. You know? But if you want to practice, you know, expressing your love towards the other person, the mirror is a good way to do it. There's nobody watching. It's just yeah. you. You know what I mean? Like this is the part where you can actually get down and try to be genuine about it. Don't only just say that you love that person, like say what you love about them, right? Be specific about it and make it a genuine compliment. Make it something that, you know, the other person will feel and you can practice that with yourself, you know, for sure. What's the next one? Um, oh yeah. <clears throat> Number two, write the following affirmation and repeat it over and over again to yourself. I am whole and perfect as I was created. That's, that's powerful. You know, you yeah. got a lot of, I heard, what is this? Is this something going around about now about something about that? Like some social media thing or something about, about loving yourself or about being worthy of yourself or something. I forget what it was, but <clears throat> it surprises me. Like the amount of people that, that don't believe that to be true. They don't, I can't look at him and say I love myself. I, I surely ain't perfect in in the way I was created. This, you know, you let me let me count thy ways how I am not perfect. I have a list here. Hold on. You but know. you know, even true about that list for for I I mean I don't know. Hopefully, there's a lot of people out there where they they list the good qualities about themselves are longer than the bad qualities. Yeah. But I I know personally intimately of a handful of people where their list of bad stuff is longer than their good list. And that's fo constantly what they focus on. And that's constantly what they believe. And I don't think that that's healthy. Oh God, no. You know, it's like anyone who looks at their deficit more than, you know, the positive in their life. Like that's just, that's just starting your day off in a, in a completely different way. Yeah. But then that goes right back to the beginning, right back to the ego. Your ego's controlling that. Right. These I, are things that other people have. The, the world has created these expectations. Yes. Right? Like, I don't have enough things. Like, I don't dress well enough. I don't drive a, a nice enough car. I don't live in a nice enough place. Like, yeah, I'm not pretty enough. I'm not handsome enough. I'm not thin enough. I'm not strong enough. That has nothing to do with who you are as a person, especially the spiritual part of you that has way more to offer than any of these ego driven things can offer, you know? And just like this third one here, it's like extend more respect to others and to all of life. It's like, you know, again, this is all about being in constant oneness. Like we're not all, we are all separate things physically, but we're all the same. Like you extend out that respect and love of others. Like you just, that's just more respect and more love, more, high frequency energy that's involved with your life you know? yeah, start start you know start um get on a higher frequency and and <clears throat> offsetting that you know ninety thousand people man we start changing this world yeah i mean he's got these other ones too right affirm to yourself and to all others that you meet man. i belong you know remind yourself that you're never alone yep. you know, respect, respect your body yeah man like that one <clears throat> it it's I mean, how much people think we shove shit down our throat yeah. all day long. Like I yeah. ain't the leanest, leanest, treatment, trimmest guy, but I, I used to never think about this stuff before, you know, mm -hmm. I was in my twenties. I was like, there's no way I can get fat. It's just not possible. You know? And then all of a sudden you're like, Oh, these shorts don't fit anymore. Like what happened here? Like, and well, you start I mean, looking around like, wow, so what happens when I shove 17 cheeseburgers down my throat, you know, like, yeah, but that's, you know, and again, Dr. Wayne talks about all this high level, low energy stuff, like it goes from everything, not only the food you eat, right? Like you eat those acidic foods, right? The sugar, yeah. the salt, the fat, right? Versus eating your plant-based diet, right? Like your, your good carbohydrates, right? Like mm -hmm. your alkali stuff. Like, yeah, healthy meats, health, good vegetables, fruits. You know what I mean? Like you have all this low level energy stuff you put into your body. That's what's going to resonate at a low, at a low energy level. You put high energy foods into your body. You're going to resonate at higher energy levels. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's the same thing with everything books that you read music that you listen to. You know what I mean? The people that hang around in your life, like are these things 
right? I know we were talking about sidestepping the ego, but what are the worldly possessions that you have in your life? Are they low level things? Yeah. Or are they high energy level things? You know, are they towards the, towards the negative in your life or, or towards the positive? Mm-hmm. You know, it's just all things considered. It's not just food. It's everything. Yeah. Like we've talked about many times, you know, the, the people you hang around with, you know, you vibe off of that. They vibe off of you. Right. So many things. And then, you know, it goes on to talk about meditating. And there's very different forms. There's some great apps out there. There's some lots of different types of ones. Find one that works for you. And, and maybe you're not as spiritually aware about, you know, the classical meditation or like yeah. sitting down and humming things or right. playing weird music in the background. But, you know, meditation can be something as simple as just thinking about your day. Yeah. Like when you wake up, like, you know what I mean? Like get out there and think about how your day is going to go and put yourself in that positive mind frame. Mm-hmm. You know, instead of waking up being like, Oh, I hate today. Just think like, you know, what are the things that I'm, I'm going to do today that I'm going to love? Like, right. that's a simple form of meditation. Like, you don't have to take it to the classical. Just be constant about, think about who you are and what you're doing. Like, that's basically what meditation is. It doesn't always have to be this, you know, zen, like. Right. Oh. And then there's, there are so many different styles of meditation. Um, like I said, there's, there's good, there's really good apps out there, Headspace and Calm. And um, I like this other, like, music track thing is like a guided one is I think it's called like Zen 12 or something like this, like a 12 minute thing. But that's what I, of all the things I tried, that's one I like that works for me. Some other people like those other mantra based things where you just repeat one thing over and over again, but try a bunch of things and see what works for you. And that, and, it, and when you're doing these meditation stuff, you, you have the, you start to learn to like control your mind and control your thoughts. And it goes back to like those seven faces of, yeah um you know and you start to unlock your creativity and your kindness and all these different things and, and then you down, match and no match you know? right and you get down to the next thing making amends with adversities yeah you, you imagine the, the the weight and the stress lifted off of you. you just forgive all the people that you thought wronged you in some way and fuck them whatever i forgive you like i'm good like it's over with already that even goes for difficult times in your life you know it's yeah. like a lot of people hold on to that. It's like, oh, yep. you know, like this one thing happened to me and, and that ruined my life forever. And like, that's not true. That happened a long time ago. It's just a story you're telling yourself. It ain't true anymore. It's over with. You know? And it's just like the other things he's got here too is always remember the self and self-respect, you know? And I think the last thing he says here, 10, I know he's got this thing about 10 and being grateful, but yeah in a state of gratitude yeah. that's the thing i liked about all the lists every at the end of every chapter he's got a, a action list every, number 10 is always gratitude like that's yeah. right man yeah well <clears throat> funny little quick story about i got a um guy interviewed me the other day for a book he's doing and he's talking to me about gratitude he's like what are your thoughts on gratitude and oh however i got into it and i was like let's, I was like, let me, let, let's think about this man so you're in your castle right your castle's just crumbling around you you got two choices what man my fuck this thing what like this is crumbling around me or or you can think yeah i guess i could renovate <laughs> no you know i need to renovate anyway man yeah. thanks, thanks for helping me take that wall down it wasn't know? wasn't like in these bricks and this yeah try something else <laughs> what are you gonna do are you gonna be grateful that it happened who knows what the opportunity is gonna come from there right you know how about oh man Good thing I wasn't in there when that thing went down. Good thing my family wasn't in there when that thing went down. Ooh, that's nice. This, uh, this can be rebuilt. It's no big thing. You know, yeah. there's always something to be grateful for. You know, you're, you're awake and listening to this shit. Hey, man, you're ahead of the world. A lot of places, a lot of ways. A lot of people didn't wake up today. Yeah, and that just kind of, you know, just being in a state of gratitude and, you know, being in a sense of, you know, humility and, and mm-hmm. being humble about things. Like that kind of sets you up for all the positive things that, that come into your life. You know, mm-hmm. when you're putting attention to work, he talks about purpose here, right? It's yeah. Like whatever it is that you choose to do, if you're motivated to be of service to others while being authentically detached from the outcome, like 
that's that's deep yeah you know, yes you know what i mean it's like you're authentically detached from the outcome it's like you know your motivation to help them is just purely of that it's to help without receiving anything at all i mean that to me is a great example of purpose yep. you know that's another way of showing how much abundance flows not to you but necessarily through you you know what i mean it's like you have so much to give you just give it on to the next person and if that person can do the same right let the abundance flow through them and keep going on like that's how that's how the the negativity in the world is counteracted yeah pay pay it forward you know do these things without expectation of reciprocation yeah and a lot of times i will decline reciprocation no 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 Pass that on to the next guy. I'm good. I don't need that. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. And then, and, that, and then that's the thing that I like, you know, with, with this purpose is like, he talk, he starts to talk about, you know, your purpose will find you. And I have a little saying that I like is the path is seeking you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You know, you, sometimes you just got to be aware. You have to be around and just be like, Hey, Hey, I saw these flowers before. Mm-hmm. Maybe this is a sign I should go down this path. Yeah, but like we were talking about just a little bit ago with the ego and you start to let those things go and you start to see the opportunities are right there. Yep. That path right. that was seeking you, you can finally see it. It yep. comes from the shadows. This is always here. I've been waiting for you. <laughs> yeah. And it's just like you get treated the way you treat others. To tr I mean, you get treated the way you teach others to treat you, you know? That's kind of along the same lines too. It's like, yeah. these are all things that if you, what you're going to give out to this, if, if this thing truly is abundant, right? Mm -hmm. This path is truly abundance and all things are created from it. Those things in your mind that you create, right? Like you're going to sit there thinking about, oh, my day is crappy. And you give that to this all abundant force. Guess what it's going to give back to you? Your day's crappy. Keep it. Yep. You know what I mean? It's like if you get out there and say, hey, you know what? Things are finally going to happen for me. Um, I know they're going to happen, and I'm just going to patiently wait. Like, mm -hmm. that's what it's going to give you. I'm just going to keep, keep my head down. I'm going to keep working. I'm going to do the, do the right things for the right reasons. These things will, will find you, you know? Yeah. And it's just it's, it's crazy. Yeah. And we go into to part three of the book, which is the, this is the last part, right? The, he talks about now – connecting these things the connection yeah well with him he, he's talking about people who are connectors right um and basically just talking about people who are truly connected right to intention right and in an earlier part of the book he also talks about sorcerers and i'm talking about harry potter and all oh, that's that. cool that definition of sorcerer i yeah, never knew that him, yeah but for him right he's yeah. like sorcerers are people who are connected with the source of creation so like Kind of like one in the same, like, you know, he's talking about this power of attention, I mean, power of intention. So people who are truly connected to this power of intention, you know what I mean? They're connected to the abundance in the universe. Yeah. Right? Like, it's impossible for them to be pessimistic, right? Because they know if they're pessimistic, that's what the universe is going to reciprocate, right? right. They know that the universe is going to provide, you know, mm -hmm. so they remain optimistic, kind of just be at place with their thoughts so that's just i don't know i like this part in the book too like yeah I mean, no this is good he kind of i felt like he, he was using it as a way to kind of bring it all together like if you can calm your ego and start to get in line you can become this connector that just brings everything together in the world yeah and i'm i'm definitely not the dalai lama so like i'm not i'm not here i don't know if i ever will be but i mean like some of the things in here, like I can definitely relate to. But I don't think it's the goal to to knock off all of these and be up. But no, I, I'm to, just to saying. try to be every one of these and to try to to knock out a lot of these in your day. Like if you're going around your day trying to be kind and trying to be loving and try and understanding everything's abundant and you know this guy's hungry. Maybe I don't. I don't. I can skip this sandwich because I go home. I got something. This you know you know there's so much out and things we can do. Yeah, but I definitely reside with this too when he starts talking about the connectors, you know, it's like yeah. um 
they don't place their thoughts on what they don't want, right? Or waste mm -hmm. their time with negative, low energy thoughts, like arguing, being frustrated, yeah. or even being offended. You know, it's like, they don't try to push their thoughts, like onto other people mm -hmm. or try to persuade them with debates or win you over or anything like that. You know I mean, they kind of just keep their thoughts on what they intend to create. And just like, if you're around them naturally, you just kind of feel uplifted, right? Like you, these people are operating at higher energy levels, right? With, with rapid frequent wave vibrations, like just being around that, like Tyson said, like if you took a picture of their aura, right, you could see this positive energy just like floating off them. And you know what that feels like, you know what you, you know, when you get around somebody, you're like, Ooh, hey, something about you, but I like this. Like, I feel good. Like, and, yeah. and in the converse, like you got somebody that's, you know, having a bad day or whatever, you're like, all right, but how can I help you with out of this? Cause I'm not trying to get into this vibration. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, again, this is talking about people who are connected with intention yeah. and the abundance and everything, you know, but, um, you know, he, oh, well, go ahead. No, I so what else? He, he's got a lot of good things through here. No, um, he, just, he says they're always thankful for everything. Yep. You, you know, even the obstacles or illness, mm -hmm. right? Because they know truly in their heart that an opportunity exists somewhere in the setback. You know yes. I mean? It's like, hey, my castle's crumbling, but you know what? Thank you for this opportunity because now I know that this is going to lead to something else. <laughs> when I was wanting to move, but I... I really want to give up this castle, but now I'm hey, yeah. I'm trying you to know. chance to start over. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. and then and, and he goes into connectors appreciate the world and everything in it. They're bewildered by it all. Like that's what a way to live. Like yeah, I, that's just, that's just I just and that's these are some of the things I took away from this. Like we. You go out and we, we just overlook all these wonderful things that are around us, you know, the clouds and the trees and the, the, the flowers and the plants. And, and you start to connect back to that stuff and be like, dang, oh, this sunset. Like, wow. Thank you. Yeah. Man, I, I, I needed that color and that vibrance in my life today. Thank you for that. Yeah. Then it's just like even things that are unfortunate, you know what I mean? If it's snowing outside, if it's raining outside. You know what I mean? Like whatever the case might be, like connectors will still appreciate that. They'll go outside. Those are the ones you see like walking around and dancing in the rain. Like it's mm -hmm. like, you know what I mean? They just live in the moment and are happy with whatever's given their way, no matter what that might be. Yep. They just look that moment up. <clears throat> yeah. And then they're generous. Yeah. They're uplifting. Like this is the kind of person a, you want to hang around with, and B, I want to strive to be that person. I think you guys should strive to be that kind of person too. Yeah. You know, I'd say people who are always in harmony with one another, right? Mm -hmm. They're always about being cooperative. They're always about assisting other people. They're always about being in sync with other people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They, they take things like coincidence and accidents mm -hmm. to, to the connector. They're the same thing. Right. There are no accidents. No. This is this is supposed to happen. Right. You know what I mean? Like you take I that may not understand it now, but there's a reason here. There's something going on that I'm I'm it's beyond me at the moment. Yeah. And it's just like I when I heard this, I was like, man, like I definitely would love to be around more connectors in my life for sure. Hey. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, I'm nowhere near this. I mean I I, I, I do this on occasion, some days. I but, strive I, I like I, I strive to be as many of these as I can every day and and more one percent more every you know every day that's my goal yeah but even for that I mean it goes on to say that you know connectors never know enough like they're attracted to every manner of activity no matter what that is and they're always trying to expand their horizons yeah you know and, and you many, know yeah. I take that like a little bit further a little bit and also like as uh, in, in the um, fact of like learning, like there's always something to learn. Like I can always, I can always learn from other people. Like I, I'm not the, the, you know, at my capacity in this subject or whatever, there's always something more. I can always learn more from, from somebody or from some situation. Yeah. And this, you know, the last few parts here is like connectors 
um, often experience what they wish to intend before it shows up in material form. You know, it's like, if you, you know, want to be happy in life, why don't you just pretend that you're happy? I mean, maybe not pretend, but just be happy. You know what I mean? Like you, you want that, whatever it is in your life, just pretend that you already have it. Live like, statements. like you already have it. It's yep. like, you know, and then eventually it will show up. You know? Yep. And I think the last thing here is like the most amazing thing is like change the way you look at things and the things that you look at change. You know, that's what Tyson's saying is like, you know, take that moment, like look out the window. It's like, you see that sunset? You know what I mean? Are there clouds up in the sky? Is it a beautiful day? Yeah. You know what I mean, that tree across the street, are the flowers blooming? Yeah. Or can you find beauty in the day? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Even if it's perceivably a shitty day, change yeah. the way you look at that. Yeah, no match, right? Shitty day, no match. No match. How are we going to match that up, right? That's good. Good stuff. And I, I guess definitely the, one of the greatest parts, and I think probably your favorite part of this, genius. You know, I, I do. And I think that's kind of why I wanted to talk about it last is like, there, there's a genius inside every person. I, I truly believe that, you know, for me, I think when Dr. Wayne Dyer is talking about genius, he's talking about what people have to offer the world. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, it's like, we, we all came from this tiny little microscopic speck of cells and Go ahead. you know what I mean? For wh whatever reason we came into existence for a purpose, mm -hmm. like whatever that purpose is, like, you know, that's, that's what people have. That's their gift to offer the world. Yeah. You know? Just kind of like how he's talking about how positive high frequency energies can counteract the negative low level energies in life. Like all of that, I think is, you know, every single person has something to give no matter what that is. You know? Everybody has a unique set of, of upbringing and beliefs and skills and experiences that make you know, you unique, even if, you know, you are an accountant with another accountant, you guys cannot be the same. Each nope. of you has different experiences and upbringing and circumstances that make you have a perspective that's different. Yeah. And that's why people will go to one accountant versus go to the other, right. you know, just like in real estate, like people will work better with me or work better with somebody else because of, you know, all the things that they have in common. But you know, just getting back to it, like the genius within every person, like know the genius in you is valid. You know, you got to learn to drown out the thoughts of other people, you know, and who's saying you're not a genius. They don't know you. Yep. I mean, that goes back to the ego thing. Like you're not your reputation. You're not your material possessions on this earth. Like you are you. Yep. And there's something inside of you that that's needs to be awakened. Or if it's awakened now is affecting 90,000 people, right? right. Mm -hmm. Boom. Crazy. You know, be aware when the genius in you is speaking or acting, you know, because once you're aware of that, you know, then you can learn to stay in tune with it. You know what I mean, like Tyson said, like you're, you're, when you're active with this intention that you have, like things will start to appear before you that have always been there. Now, when you just stay in tune with that, you'll learn to look for these things. You know, you, seeking you. Yeah, you gotta, but you gotta learn to stay in tune with with what it is and your purpose here in this life. Yeah. You know, the other thing here is like practice humility. You know, to me, that's this is a rough part. It's like you know, he says, take no credit for your talents, your abilities, your aptitudes, and your proficiencies. Mm -hmm. And I mean, when he's writing the book, he Dr. Wayne Dyer talks. He's like, is it me who's actually writing these words on the book? Or are there greater forces at work? Nope. You know what I mean? And he goes on further to say that I am humble in my ability to know. I'm, I'm humble in my ability to know where any of my accomplishments come from. Like, it's just, you don't know where they're, they're coming from. And the other thing here is like, look for the genius in other people. You know, again, we, we are physically separate from people, but know that we are not separate. You know, there are greater forces at work and they work through all of us. 
They work through Tyson. They work through me. They work through you just the same. Yeah, we're all spiritual beings of matter, no matter what size, shape, color, whatever, all that other bullshit is nothing. Yeah. So if you can learn to find the genius in others, right, that just helps you on your path, right? Path towards intention. That's the thing. Genius comes in so many forms. I mean, yeah. it's not it's not about how smart you are or necessarily how hard you work. I mean, it, it comes in so many forms and it's right. so easy to dismiss these 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 superficial ways we label geniuses you know yeah. look beyond that you know yeah for sure and you know and, and in looking beyond that i mean you also have to kind of dr wing Dyer talks about simplifying your life too mm. i mean yeah you got to look beyond it but sometimes all these other things that are going on in your life they're just distractions right all yes. this, everything that other people saying to you, these are just extra voices that are, that are clouding up your channels, right? These trivial pursuits that occupy your channels may be preventing you from realizing your true genius. You know? Or even the genius of the others around you. Yeah, same thing too. It's like, you know, you have to be out there. Know that there's something that puts you into existence and try to stay in tune with that. You know, and again, it's the same thing. Like talks about like number 10, gratitude. Like remain humble while staying in a state of gratitude. Your genius has nothing to do with your ego. Nope. Those who attribute their genius to their ego often lose their capacity for genius and struggle to find it again. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's so true. It's like you're, you're getting all these good things, right? Like you're becoming, you know, one with your power of intention and then once you start attributing all that to your ego, right? Oh, this is me. I did all this. Look at what I accomplished. Mm -hmm. Like you, you begin to lose the source of which you got your energy from. Mm -hmm. You start to, you're, again, that ego brings you down to the lower energy levels. And then from there, like you lose it. Yeah. You just kind of be aware of that too. You know? It's just, it's just kind of rough, you know, finding, finding your purpose in life apart from your ego, right? Yeah. Um, you know, to me, I, I say think back to when you're a child, right? Because usually as a child or possibly when a time when your ego wasn't present. For most of us in children, ego's not there. Yeah, we when haven't learned those things yet. Two years old, you know, your ego's not there. And you just kind of have to stay in tune with that, right? And find the source which created you. And that's kind of, going to take you back on your your path back to intention and how you can find your your contribution or genius in the world that, I like that was a good that, you know that was that was a good book you know i urge you people if i mean if you made it this far and you weren't throwing up because you were like <laughs> this is some bullshit <laughs> check this book out give it give it a shot give things maybe give things a chance that that you've discounted in the past. Yeah, definitely. I think this is a good book. And, and if you can take, you know, if you don't like the spirituality, I, I sure don't. I just, I've learned to just kind of let it, let it pass, pass over. And, you know, it does, doesn't, doesn't bother me. But give it a shot, man. Re read through this book, listen to it, wherever you want to consume it. It's got good stuff in there. Start to live your life through intentions. Yeah, for sure. And it was my intention is to give you guys something. <laughs> this is giveaway time. You know, <laughs> this month, all of July, we're, you know, we're about halfway through now and this airs. I'm giving you the ability to get this book for free. <laughs> I know, right? On Audible, if you win, there it is. Three months of Audible for free. That's one book a month for three months. Yeah, good deal. Improve your life. For sure good deals yeah. um and then in the show notes for this thing i prepping for this and, and whatnot i found a movie he did uh, in 2009 oh. called the shift i'll link to that movie in here for you guys if you want to um kind of i guess watch the video version in a way of of it it's not the book but a lot of the uh, sentiments are echoed in the movie and it goes through like this 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 couple that has that, that ego of material possessions define them. And then these different other kind of different things go through the director of 
of the in the movie he has you know the his ego says he must do these ambitious things in these types of ways and it goes through that it's a really it was really a fun movie you know it's a it's a little bit of a seems a little cheesy but i i really enjoyed it i thought it was a good movie i'll link that for you guys if you're interested in watching the movie and mr ransom what's this week's challenge all right so this week's challenge right is to recognize when your decisions are driven by ego okay so we're talking about statements like i'm right rather than i want to be happy Mm. it's like winning is the only thing rather than just playing the game you know my reputation precedes me rather than the relationships i create right? success is measured in dollars rather than in happiness you know just pay attention whenever you hear words like my possessions my achievements my reputation Right? my beauty all this my 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 like that's your ego mm. and you got to remember we're not only worldly possessions right we are also spiritual beings that came into existence from a tiny cluster of cells against all odds mm. i mean there is a force right this life force that created you into existence right you got to let go of your ego if you're going to be in harmony with the force that created you. You know? Man. <laughs> Take that challenge, guys. It's yeah. hard shit, but it's good shit. Yeah. And, and in closing, huh? Have we got some final thoughts? Yeah. And come from the source of all creations. Do things that are selfless. Helping people giving away your money and food, whatever, your time, these different things. There's more. It's abundant. Live from that abundance. Don't keep a scorecard of your generosity. No, if you're not going to, if you're going to do something because you're going to expect something in the future, don't do it. Do things and do not expect reciprocity for what you do. I'm from that a place of abundance, not the place of scarcity. If you, if you give from a place where things are infinite, you will always have more. It's crazy. Good stuff. It is. And, you know, to close out, thank you guys for, for being here tonight. We really do appreciate your guys' time. If this show has been a help, help to you, share it with two people you think it could help. If you'd like to help support the show by investing in yourself, your education, and your future, head over to our Patreon page and become a Patreon. In between shows, Connect with us at the social chameleon show. I'm sorry, the social chameleon on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Also subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast app. If you're listening to the podcast version, please leave a review so it can help reach more people like you. For past episodes and links to everything we've talked about here tonight, head over to the social chameleon show. And for the giveaway, head over to the social chameleon show slash pick me and enter, make sure you guys get entered to win the uh, audible giveaway. Until next time. Keep learning, growing, and transforming into the person you want to become.